to start, first of all, by saying thank you. There are literally hundreds of people to thank and scores of elected officials and GOP leaders who put their confidence in me right from the very beginning, and I'll probably miss a few, but there were several who stepped up um, right from day one, including my very good friend, Bob Ott, Joanne Burrell, Terry Nall, Joe Gebby and Bates Madison, Joe Lockwood, my hometown mayor, Jerry Wood. And I need to thank you know, on April 18th, I said to everyone that this was going to be a very, very tight race. It was going to be contentious, and it was going to require all hands on deck. And that's exactly what we had. From from all of the others who were the GOP competitors in the primary, including several who are here tonight. I see Bob Gray. Thank you for your help. Every single member of the Republican Georgia congressional delegation, our constitutional officers, the legislators, Governor Nathan Deal and First Lady Sandra Deal, Senator Perdue, Senator Isaacson, and my very close friend, Senator Saxby Chambliss. I need to also thank Speaker Ryan and the House leadership and so many of the members across this country who also united to help us hold the sixth. And a special thanks to the President of the United States of America. Vice President Mike Pence, and I think it's appropriate to take a minute to acknowledge a new friend that I was able to make over the course of that campaign, this campaign, and that was Majority Whip Steve Scalise. Right up until that tragic day on the ball field, Steve would drop me a text message every single week just to make sure I was doing okay and hanging tough. I think he even called me the Terminator in one of them. <laughs> Wasn't sure about that one, Steve, but hasta la vista. Let me just tell you. But really and truly, what happened on that ball field was a terrible tragedy. And we need to all continue to lift up Steve and the others who were injured that day. And we need to also lift up this nation so that we can find a more civil way to deal with our disagreements. Because in these United States of America, no one, no one should ever feel their life threatened over their political beliefs and positions. And I say that, ladies and gentlemen, in regards to both sides of the political aisle. Through this campaign, I have had a really great joy of getting to know any number of our leaders in Washington. And let me tell you, 
Even though within our own GOP family we sometimes have disagreements, these are fine men and women who are doing their level best for this country. I really am honored to be able to stand before you tonight and so extraordinarily humbled. But as everyone knows, most big things are not accomplished by one person alone. And I had a tremendous amount of support in this campaign from each and every one of you to a great campaign team. They really are. Yes, give them a hand. To individuals on the ground who put in countless hours knocking on doors and making phone calls in the some of the hottest days ever, y'all. <laughs> but through it all, everyone persevered. And then there's this guy. How about Steve Handel? This man is my heart. He tells you he's his, my number one supporter, and I can tell you that in everything I have ever attempted to do in my life, he has been my number one supporter. And there are no words to say how much I love you. ago, I had the opportunity to speak with John Ossoff. He was more than gracious, and he thanked me for a spirited campaign. And I wish him and Alicia all the best in the new life that they are going to be starting. Now tonight, tonight, tonight I stand before you extraordinarily humbled and honored at the tremendous privilege and high responsibility that you and the people across the 6th District have given to me to represent you in the United States House of Representatives. I will do... We have had a legacy of tremendous leadership in the 6th District. Our very own Tom Price, who's now Secretary of HHS. Now Senator Johnny Isaacson. And former Speaker Newt Gingrich. These men, these statesmen, have created very, very big shoes to fill. And I will do my level best to live up to the standards that they have set. To the John Ossoff supporters, know that my commitments, they extend to every one of you as well. We may have some different beliefs, but we are part of one community, the community of the 6th District. And I will work just as hard to earn your confidence in the weeks and months ahead. And I give every Georgian this promise. My promise is to work every single day relentlessly to make our state and this country a better place. My pledge is to be part of the solution to focus on governing, to put my experience to work 
in helping to solve the very serious issues that we're facing in this country. I think I might be the only, if not one of the few, former chamber CEOs to actually serve in the U.S. Congress. And I know I'm one of the few who have come out of local office as a former county commission chairman, and I'm also one of the few former secretaries of state. We have a lot of work to do, a lot of problems that we need to solve. We need to finish the drill on health care. We've got to do a better job for this economy so that we can create more jobs and better paying jobs. And we've got to do more for creating jobs, especially in the small business community. We have to make sure that we move forward with comprehensive tax reform. With lower corporate rates, but ladies and gentlemen, also lower individual rates so that our middle class can participate and our small businesses can participate. And finally, permanently repeal the death tax. And to our veterans in the room. To our veterans in the room, we have a high obligation as a nation, and I know I have a high obligation as the next congressman to ensure that we provide our military men and women with the resources they need to do the job we are asking them to do. And that obligation extends when their tour of duty is over to them and to their families so that we meet our commitments to them. I have said this before multiple times on the campaign trail, and I'm especially reminded of it tonight. My path has been a somewhat unusual one and I am a pretty unlikely soon-to-be junior congressman from the state of Georgia. I never expected any of this. Growing up in a turbulent home, as I left home at 17 and went to work, I could have given up and let the circumstances that I was facing dictate and control the course of my life, but I did not. I believe that our life experiences the good and the bad the unique, the mundane, and the difficult. They are what build our character, set our core, help us develop discernment in our decision making. And it's that fighting spirit, that perseverance and tenacity that I will take to Washington. It's been the driving force in my life, and it will be the driving force for you as I represent you. many people have lifted me up in the tough days of my life. But when all is said and done, I know that it has been a great God and a truly great nation that afforded a young girl the opportunity to grow up and be whatever it was she wanted to be. I'm also very well aware of another obligation that comes with tonight's decision by the voters. The obligation of being the first Republican woman elected to Congress from the great state of Georgia.
Jer- <laughs> During the campaign, I met a young girl named Sophia. She was at one of our very first rallies right after the April 18th primary. Sophia is a beautiful eight-year-old girl, and she had been following the race and told a mutual friend how much she thought that I should win. So I talked to her a little bit, and here's what she said to me. This is an exact quote. Karen, if you can win... It says to every eight-year-old girl that she can do it, too. While my name was the one on the ballot, I genuinely believe that tonight is not really about me. It's about all of those young and not-so-young little girls and boys out there the ones who have been underestimated most of their lives, told that they couldn't do it or that they weren't good enough, the ones that were always counted down and out. Tonight reminds us, it reminds me, that anything is possible with hard work, determination, grit, and people who believe in you. Thank you for believing in me. Tonight's victory, it's for you, and it's for every single citizen in the 6th District. It's for every single person with a dream. Someone gave me a bracelet a few years back, and it said something that I remind myself of every single day. She believed she could, so she did. Well, friends, we did. So tonight, let's celebrate, and tomorrow, the real work will begin. The hard work of governing and doing that in a civil, responsible way that is in the best interest of every Georgian, every 6th District citizen, and every citizen of the United States of America as we prepare to send Georgia's first Republican woman to Congress.